My body's ready. Oh my. Is your body ready? Oh, it will be soon. Hey everybody. How's it going? I'm Joe. And I'm Sean. Welcome to this Friday's live stream at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the great state of Ahoya. Oh yeah. The tw- wonderful, bountiful land near Cleveland. It's in Twinsburg. Twinsburg actually has, for those of you that don't know, Twinsburg has a Twins Day festival once a year. Because the person that founded, the people that founded Twinsburg were twins. More importantly, we're home to a pretty big FedEx distribution center, which means you get your stuff delivered pretty quick. Albeit sometimes throwing them over gated communities and walking away, but... Well, yeah. Gets delivered. Yeah. We're here to deliver you some of the coolest tech news in the industry. Really, it's stuff that you probably have all heard of here and there, but we still want to talk about it because it's interesting. Yeah. We're going to start off with something that's fairly light, not as important, but still neat. I mean... Right? I just got a new mouse, so this is kind of interesting for me. Out of all the mice, mice's, mouses out there, the MX518 was one of everybody's favorites. Logitech made way and paved the direction of mouse manufacturing moving forward. That really, it was just a fairly basic gaming mouse. It was super comfortable. Yeah, but at the same time, there is something definitely to be said for a gaming peripheral that's not that complicated, but right. it's solid. It's very solid, but I have one very honest question to ask. Now, do you think that this is Logitech's admission to just kind of not doing so well with mouse manufacturing so they're like hey an oldie but a goodie this will get us sales or do you really think that like out of a level of complaints and feedback from end users were like dude why did you remove the mx518 it changed my life it saved my marriage i named my daughter after it i I think a little bit of both because i mean i can really see logitech recognizing i think there's a the last like what two or three years the amount of rgb crap ugh it's just too much. Like it's what I we feel say like, that as we're sitting at an RGB desk. Like, don't get me wrong. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff it's cool on, but I feel like people it, it's coming up so often and it's in everything that maybe Logitech was like, let's try putting out a mouse that like is just a mouse. Yes, Again, it's, you know what I it's mean. It's just a mouse that you use. I could see it either way, but I mean, I hope we see more just basic peripherals because I really like the it just works kind of deal. Sure. I mean, honestly, what I would like to see is a keyboard that has sensitivity to it. Oh, what was that one? What that was That one it? from that, that company that makes those things. Oh, look, I'm not going to remember That go it. click, click. It was Cooler Master. That's it. Cooler Master unveiled at CES, and I actually got to use it for myself. It is a super crazy, awesomely designed mechanical keyboard that has sensitivity from the moment you key press all the way down to the base of the click. And... It's a pretty pricey keyboard. I don't remember the pricing off the top of my head, but I know that it was outrageous for a keyboard. But to be honest, 
the price is justified considering the fact that it has sensitivity. So if you're playing like a first person shooter and you need to lean out of a corner just slightly to stay in cover, you can legitimately do that with the keyboard. Are you looking it up now? I'm trying. Is that what you're doing? I don't, I don't know what kind of keyword you'd have to have in order to find yeah, that's what it's like, uh, a keyboard that's got sensitivity. Yeah, is there another keyboard that has that or is this the first? This is the first. It is the first of its kind. Which it will play. You know, interesting because kind of, I mean, when was it? Was it PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 that had the, uh, where the triggers actually had a difference in press? Because that was the first one to do it, wasn't it? I want to say it was the PS3, actually. And I just realized I'm holding an MX518 mouse. <laughs> like I'm using one right here. Hey. And we're talking about it. Well, I, I just like it because you have the sensitivity buttons. You have... Like the application shortcut key, so you can bring up like the Logitech panel, and then the wheel. The wheels on the mouse go forward and backward, which is what you'd expect, right, from a mouse. Anyways. Um, oh, here we go. The same design as before, but with updated components. Updated. So the pulling rate is apparently improved. The sensitivity is 6,000 DPI. I kind of wonder, though, I, I wonder if it, it may be... Because I feel like in other industries, you see a lot of kind of going back to the simple with a little bit of higher quality. Like that mm -hmm. seems to be the trajectory recently. I wonder if that's maybe what they're trying to jump into. Could be. Maybe. I just like that they're focusing more on functionality and practicality over LEDs yeah. and RGB. I got to say, and I'll, admit, I'll say it again. I use another Logitech mouse, and admittedly, I'm going to have to look it up because... I never remember the part number off the top of my head and what the model is. It's the G903, right? I really like the G903, but it's really disheartening that if you want to use it wirelessly, you have to sacrifice the weights. And I'll explain why. Um, granted, the, the wireless portion that you have in the mouse adds a little bit of weight. Okay. What wireless portion? Well, you remove the weight out of the compartment at the bottom of the mouse. Okay. And you replace it with kind of like a wireless charging sensor that connects to these leads inside the mouse. So if you use the wireless charging mouse pad... Oh, they like fit in the same spot. It charges, yeah. You have oh. to pull the weights of the mouse out, swap them with like the wireless piece that allows it to charge wirelessly on the mat. I mean, does the wireless piece have a decent amount of weight to it? It's got maybe half. Yeah. So if you're a person like me that you use the heaviest weights because you just like the feel of it, gone yeah. forever. It, and it, but the only downside of getting used to a weighted mouse is the moment you use a mouse like this that's super light, you're like, oh, dude, I just you, you slide all over the place. I just got a new mouse. the The learning curve on it, I was I underestimated, man. Like, yeah. just it has it has the two buttons on the side and a DPI adjuster, and I keep like hitting that and just like looking like I'm having a stroke while I'm playing a game because it's like just, Stephen Hawking gaming can't mode. Move properly, yeah. Speaking of, I had no, and this is me and my ignorance. I had no idea that Stephen Hawking was a product of a very bad disease. Like I, did, I just thought he was born that way. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, it, it was, they think he had something that was similar to ALS, but not quite because he survived way too long. Right. Because like most people with ALS die within like four or five years. That would explain, though, why he was like able to achieve and, and do so much with like his intellect. Oh, yeah. I mean, you ever because see Because it was, once he had, I believe, either in the midst or after he had finished studying everything that it was that he became as a professional, mm -hmm. then he was hit with it. Oh, I mean, he, he, got, he, he, got, he got diagnosed, like, young. He yeah, there's, like a, mid -20s, there's a movie coming out about it that I actually look like. It looks pretty good, and it's the guy that played the protagonist from uh, Fantastic Beasts, the British Oh, uh, Eddie Redmayne. Eddie Redmayne? Yeah, isn't that his name? Redmayne. Yeah. Man, I, I, the British have some really cool names. I still yeah. Miroslav. Um, That's my favorite. Benedict Cumberbatch or oh, Cucumber Cumberbund? Patch? Cumberbund? Bubbly Dumb Cumberbund? Yeah. Benefric Cucumber Patch? Benefer. No. Um, Jennifer Picklebatch? Staddlebatcher? I know you're reaching. I am reaching. All right. So. With a set of metal utensils. <laughs> yeah. So in other news. Oh, hi, Macha. Hi. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mitchell. I, 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 don't, I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah, that's why. No child. No, oh, no hi, child. Mark. I'm just going to call you Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. That'll work. Um, so we actually, we looked at this from different perspectives, which I find interesting. 
I looked at it as the My Body is Ready guy is leaving Nintendo, and you were like, Reggie Jackson. Oh, hey, their president's leaving. I didn't yeah. realize it was the it's same. It's Reggie, dude. Reginald. Yeah, so the. Uh, Reggie, Reggie. Reggie, who has been the president of Nintendo of Americas for the last 15 years, is stepping down. Um, a couple interesting things about this. How do you pronounce his last name? Well, you got to do this. Try it. <sighs> Phil's Amy? Phil's a man? Phil, Phil's aim. I don't know. Reggie Phil's aim. Dame. <laughs> that is a sweet earth, I might say. Oh, Brown. wow. Pulling out some Flash video references. I dabble. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he's leaving. And so for those of you that uh, don't know or haven't seen the My Body is Ready picture i i think we need to make sure it's shared with everybody oh. um oh she's pulling that up a couple things that are interesting the new president well is it bowser no his name is actually doug bowser so nintendo of america's is now going to be led by a gentleman named bowser we'll see how that works there's, out there's no way his legitimate name is doug bowser uh-uh look it up no 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 boom Bowser's taking over Nintendo. Doug for Bowser real. and other people whose names perfectly fit their jobs. I kind of feel like that it's a marketing ploy, and that's not his real. There's no way. Well, here's what's here's no what's, way. It's like Elton John. Here's what's interesting about this. This is actually so. What Intel His got a new ready. Intel got a new CEO. Ooh yeah, look at that. How that my body's ready will haunt you. No, it won't. It'll um, it'll swing me to sleep. So how many how many major tech companies have changed? leadership in the last like intel just did um, asus did asus just did this, one ceo for two co-ceos this is actually going smoothly man like apparently this bowser guy he's been working with him for the last like four years he's been training him up the switch nintendo's in a good spot right now yeah and they're switching over so i thought that was they're they're putting him in a position that's going to make his job cake for a while i mean it's know? it's nice to see a tech company switching leadership when things are going okay rather than just like Maybe catastrophic. That, maybe that's why. Maybe he's like, eh, you know what? And it's kind of difficult because even though a lot of people will attribute a company's problems to the president based on the direction that they they are trying to bring the company to or away from, that's not always the case. I mean, they probably have a lot to do with like the hiring process and the people they bring on that provide and create new intellectual properties. You well, know? I mean, a lot of it too is, I mean, even look at here, the the culture we have as a company pretty much comes down from the top you know what i mean like the the yeah maybe not in terms of like day-to-day -day sure. affecting how a company runs but like especially just in culture and how your employees tend to be tend to be sure you know that kind of angle matters yeah. a lot well i think like i look at a ceo in a company is not as an individual that just kind of makes okay. the bigger picture decisions right but they're also kind of like what a coach is to baseball as far as like recruitment goes like, just, part, part wait, of their wait, job wait, is wait, to wait. recognize talent all right, Bring next time on. we have a really good month, can we dump Gatorade on Alex? Um, sure. Like I, one of those giant ones it, it, like but at it, the end of a Super Bowl? It's got to be filled with Jello, though. You want to knock him out? Well, no. Like, just dump the Jello out over. It's not going to knock him out. What kind of Jello have you been eating? It's going to be this big, and it's just like a hard, gelatinous thing. Like, I imagine man, that would probably do some damage. It's like, man, Sean, I thank you so much for the Jello, bro, but it is just too heavy. Okay, look. So what? <laughs> a gallon of water weighs like eight, eight ish pounds one of those things takes about what 10 gallons so that's about 80 pounds i didn't say drop the gatorade like container on him how do you dump jello you don't pour jello are you saying like jello wiggle cubes? wiggle 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 it's just gonna be like one of those giant like it's gonna be what myth it's gonna look like what mythbusters used to use as like fake human bodies the ballistics gel stuff you sure remember those? okay yeah maybe we could just fill it with like marmalade or something i don't know <laughs> Not jam, marmalade. Marmalade. You know, gotta, gotta, gotta go with the fancy. Got, gotta, gotta, gotta. Marmalade. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Speaking of what's going on, your phones are about to be revolutionized, according to Samsung. Okay, I, I kind of want to pick your brain on this. Well, mm -hmm. let's get please, into please, what it is please real do. quick. Please do. Pick so it. Samsung is now having, or they have been talking about it, and now it's becoming a uh, actual product launch. Mm. They have a foldable phone. Now, they, they really went creative with the name on it. Did you did you see how went how they went with it? I mean, Samsung's new foldable phone. Wait as for long, it. As long as they're not going to fall into the fold. It's called the Samsung Galaxy Fold. Fold is an F O L D, or yes. fooled is an F O O L E D. 
Only time will tell. Uh, it's a two thousand dollar phone. Which, <laughs> yeah, um, which is a little sign up steep. For, sign up for a six year contract with Sprint and get your phone for only eight hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially, the the idea is when wow. you have the phone folded, it's you have about like a less than a four and a half inch screen, um, and then when you unfold it, you have a seven inch screen. So the idea it seems what? to be is when it's folded, it's a phone. When it's opened, it's a tablet. What? Seems no. to be. No. I, I agree. So Gerard, the folding phone is a gimmick and a half. I agree. No pun intended. Yeah. No, it's it's a gimmick and a half of a gimmick. But yeah. it's got some weird stuff to it. Like it is an incredibly thin phone when it's unfolded. Like it's actually thinner than any of the galaxies that they're putting out, like the S10s. Yeah, but how long is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real question. And you get a foldable stylus. You do get a foldable stylus. Does I the mean? stylus fold with the phone? I don't know. You're gonna get somebody. To, to, Samsung does not want to come out with now with a thin phone after this because you're gonna get somebody that holds that phone and go, "Does this one fold too?" Snap. It just can we make phones just like a little thicker and have better battery life? That's all we need. Well, no, be because so then nice. if, if we don't want Samsung putting more into their battery designs, because then we're gonna have mobile grenades again. Okay, fair. fair point. Speaking of which, did you hear about the Grand Theft Auto mod that somebody created where he? transforms the grenades into Samsung Galaxy Notes. Notes. And Samsung uh, issued a cease and desist to Rockstar. Like, you need to cut that. You need to cut it out right now. How you is stop that? that. I don't know, man. It's, God, Sam, get it's Samsung. Get they're, they're the, they're the giant. Here, Samsung. They're the giant of all giants. Um, you know, Samsung, by the way, is a huge, huge, huge company. Huge. Yeah. Like, the people that work on their mobile have absolutely zero relation as far as day-to-day -day operation with the people that work on displays or the people that work on storage. Our Samsung... Or the our people Samsung, that work on their refrigerators. True. Our Samsung rep, um, he deals mainly in memory and storage, primarily flash storage. And it's like, it's all broken up into separate sectors. And even though they're all part of like the, the same company, they don't operate like that it's to a degree. It's almost like what, like parent companies and a bunch of child companies just right. all under the same umbrella? Yeah, because like we asked him questions about the monitors. He's like, that's not my thing. I know nothing about that. So SSDs, <laughs> which is to be expected, right? Um, so it's just, it's really interesting. You know, in this, but this phone has six cameras. Why not seven? I, why six? Here's what they should do. They should give you the six cameras, right? And if you're not satisfied with those six cameras, they're going to give you the extra camera free. <sighs> it's really just like hidden into the phone and it's disabled. You're going to buy one $9.99 for shipping and handling. I was really just thinking about that scene and there's something about Mary where it's Harlan Williams and he's talking about he's going to come out with an exercise tape called Six Minute Abs and uh, to compete with Seven Minute Abs. And if they weren't satisfied with the first six minutes, they'll get the extra minute free. <laughs> Ben Stiller's like, yeah, but then you know you're gonna you're gonna have a real problem if I know it was seven minute abs and you give them the eight minute and Ben Stiller was like, well, if somebody comes out with six minute abs, then you're in trouble, and he just snaps, he just snaps on him about it. Um, so that's what it was making me think of. Gotcha. Sorry for sorry for the tangent. <laughs> yeah. How much um, store? I, I read somewhere else, by the way, that the new Galaxy S10 is gonna have a terabyte of storage. Um, I. I terabyte. Saw, so the the foldable phone is I think it's supposed to come with 512. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, they are working. I forget what uh, was it Sandisk just put out a one terabyte micro SD cord. Let's see. Somebody I'm pretty sure micro just SD launched one. one terabyte. Let's see what we get. Excuse me. We get Samsung has a 512. Sandisk has a one. Sandisk has a 400. Lexar has a one. Sean, you don't pee there. That's not where you pee. Okay. You're fine. Someone will mop it up. <laughs> um, so right now we have SanDisk and Lexar with one terabyte. A one terabyte full-size SD card, actually. It's $400. That's actually not that bad. No, but, dude, that's that's shite for a few reasons, and I'll tell you why. A, the read and write performance, is that is on par with the hard drive. 95 read, 70 write. And I get I get the idea of, yeah, it's, a, it's an SD card, like what do you expect, but... Yeah, but I mean, when, when do you actually need that kind of transfer rate on an SD card? For your Wii U. <laughs> okay, uh, that I think this is mostly for, for your like, uh, for your 3DS camera people. Or your Switch. The Switch to take an SD card? Micro SD. Oh, micro SD. Yeah, I put a 128 in it, and I never looked back. <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh yeah. Install everything to it. It's lightning fast. I played Bayonetta two off of it. It was great. Loved it. 
It's a fantastic game. It's the most fantastical. I haven't played Bayonetta. I th- I'm thinking about getting uh, what is it, Resident Evil this weekend. Dude, you need to. Yeah. That game, like, I thought I was going to play Leon's storyline and be done with it. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm good. Nope, I'm jumping back in for Claire's. Well, it's what? There's, you have to run through the game twice. It's like first half Leon, second half Claire, and then you run through it again, and it's first half Claire, second half Leon, or something like that. Is it? I don't know. I know nothing about it. I just hear you and Wes talking about, like, this storyline, and then that, and then you well, do it this time, and then it's that. Here's what I never cared for in the way that um, Capcom handled Resident Evil 1 and 2, and that's they're they're almost alternate universes. That's how it's kind of handled. And so if you um, like each Resident Evil game is its own like thing. Or? No, so the storyline is practically the same as far as events go. There's minor differences in the events, but it's like here's how Chris's storyline would go at the beginning of Resident Evil One if he was the one that ran into the mansion and you followed him. And here's how Jill's storyline would go because if you go in as Chris, you walk into the mansion in the first one with Wesker and Jill. Okay. And Wesker and Jill disappear. When you go with Jill, it is, I believe, Chris and Barry. And when you get there, at least in the original Resident Evil, I haven't played uh, Jill's storyline in the reboot, uh, Barry's just missing. And Chris is like, where's Barry? I don't know where Barry is. Barry, where's Barry? Hmm. And uh, Jill goes off to do her thing. She comes back. The, 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 he's gone. There's no Chris. And that, that's what happens. Speaking uh, of no They Chris. do the same thing in Resident Evil 2. It's all like, okay, here's Claire when you get to the police station. All right, here's Leon when you get to the police station. What I'd like for them to do is kind of like what they did with 5, six, or five and 6, which was great. And that's it's the same scenario. Wait, you're calling Resident Evil 5 and 6 great? I thought they were pretty good. I think they I were think bad. 5. 6 was... People had mixed reviews about 6. Dude, 5 had... What was it? It was fun. Was it 5 that had the zombies that had RPGs? Yes. That, that screwed me up a little hold, bit. Hold on, but that's the thing, though. If you remember, did you play Resident Evil 4? Yeah. It, at that point, the virus isn't a virus. It's a parasite. Yeah. I Let me... Resident Evil 5, I liked, but only because it was co-op. Jill, I thought it was Wesker and Barry. Is it? And then maybe it's, for Chris, it's what? Jill and Barry? I don't know. I played the reboot, Weasley, and when you play as Chris in the reboot, it's Wesker and Jill. Yeah, Just I, saying. I've played Resident Evil 4 and 5. That's it. Yeah. Rudu, spoiler, there is a Resident Evil 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7. Man, Rudu, do you have to ruin it for everybody? Yeah, they're going to probably come on. keep remaking them, right? That's not nice. Like, they'd be dumb not to. Come on. Um, well, they've confirmed that they're working on Nemesis already. Because okay. they basically said, depending on the success of Resident Evil 2, we may reboot Resident Evil 3, but you have to ask for it. And then what? Two million copies. Yeah, Resident Evil 2 did really well. Two million copies in the first week, something yeah. like that, right? Done. Let's take that. I just hope they. I just hope they they make it to uh, Resident Evil 4. I love so that game. So I'm gonna do some quick maths. Quick right? maths. Two plus two plus two. times sixty. That's a hundred and twenty million dollars in sales if everybody paid full price for it. Okay? Yeah, which I mean, even if. And then Steam takes thirty percent. Thirty percent off the top. So Steam made a good. Thirty-six million. Actually, that so that brings me. Did oh you my know? God, that's disgusting. Talking about Steam, did you know that Steam had a video section where you could buy videos? Oh, you mean the videos that they actually started giving away for free because nobody was buying them? Oh, so they're just killing that off. Yeah, I saw somebody created a, a headline. It was like Steam. Thanks for not much at all. Yeah, it, it's I. The only time I saw the video section of Steam, and the only time I I was ever really directly exposed to it, was for um. Oh, what is it called? They did a an esports kind of documentary. I forget what it was called hmm. that they put out. True Sight. That's what it was. Okay. Um, and that was actually like the platform is all right, but it's just you don't go to Steam for that. You know no. what I mean? Like it, it's just nope. So they're killing that off. If you have Steam videos, you can still access them. Um, Yee. And they will still have videos on Steam. That's kind of the weird thing. Are they going to come out with a video to talk about like the documentary behind them removing their videos? Is like a Yo, dog. Final say. I heard you. I heard you like removing videos. So we made a video about you removing videos, so you can remove them while you remove them. I get it. You uh, vape. Yeah. Weasley. Capcom released a survey about the Resident Evil Two reboot. 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 I filled it out. I need Resident Evil Three remade. I, I, Hopefully I, they will. Dude, they, they they'd be dumb not. To. I mean, with how good this one sold. Resident Evil Three was the first uh, Resident Evil game to to change it up. So you did not choose your character in Resident Evil Three. You started off as Jill. You jumped to Enrique, and then you jumped back to Jill, and then that was it. 
Mm. So there was there was the same storyline, and I like that. I respect it. That's why I don't care too much for like Resident Evil Two. I'm assuming follows the same moniker. It's going to be the same storyline, but oh, events are slightly different because this is, you know, this is Claire playing and not Leon. But I do really love what they did with Leon's character. How they truly made him out to be a rookie because that's when he entered the series for the first time. Yeah. It kind of they kind of made it to where Leon's cocky attitude moving forward makes sense now. It's like after everything he's been through and how he learned and and has been deceived, like you earned that cockiness, bro. It's all you. I know, I'm a big fan of, of what we're seeing with all these like remakes and reboots that are coming out, where it's very similar to the original game, but they're they're just keeping the idea and they're actually like still developing a game on top of it. What they're doing is to me they're doing it justice. Well, they did that with uh, the first one. I can really like remember that they did that really, really well. Was the Ratchet and Clank reboot from what 2016? Yeah, dude, that's a good point. I think it was awesome. They're taking games like the Resident Evil 2 series and they're doing them justice because of you know today's modern tech. That's like when Capcom came out after Resident Evil 7 was released and people were like, "This is great. This is awful. Whatever." They originally said this was the original idea that we had for Resident Evil. But technology wasn't where it needed to be to pull this off. Kind of like why George Lucas released four, five, and six of episodes in Star Wars because he's like, oh, "I need, we need more computer graphics." He to didn't, do one, he two, didn't three. Uh, put it five until the second one came out. Oh, really? Uh huh. A New mm. Hope was just a New Hope, and then after the uh, when I think it was when Empire either came out or right before it came out, he was like, "This one's number five. Yeah. And now we fun have fact seven. Now eight, we have nine. thirty-seven of them. Dude, I'm going to be like 70 years old. It's a big Star Wars episode 22. Yeah. Where's Where's Mark Hamill? <laughs> Casey in the room. He's been dead for 40 years. Yeah. So have I. Inside. <laughs> um, Marudu says, Think Netflix might be heading into hosting games as a service like Steam. They have said their biggest competitor was Fortnite and video games viewing like Twitch. And they hired a CFO that worked for Activision Blizzard. Um, I think more or less they were saying... I kind of get that twofold, Naruto, because it's their biggest competitor as far as where people are spending their time. So if you're not watching a movie and you're playing video games, it's you're taking an audience away from what they could be doing with you and your services. But if Netflix entered a streaming service to the point to where it was like you're actually streaming games, that would be neat. Just understand that companies that have tried to do that are failing miserably or they're just not, it's not becoming a mainstream thing. Like I there's, mean, there's a service trying. called Shadow now. Have you heard Google's of them? trying it now. Are they? Yeah. Well, they, they announced that they're going to, yeah. So there's a company called Shadow and I had my Facebook just blown up with advertisements from them probably because of like the related like gaming news that I subscribe to on Facebook. Okay. And basically what they do is it's virtualization. They have a massive cluster of Xeon based servers and they reserve uh, six cores. They have like packages. Like you can get four cores, eight threads. You can get six cores, so twelve threads. So kind of like running a game server. Yeah, basically. Okay. And they assign specifications to your host PC that it's going to be powered by. Like out of our server of you know the amount of available resources, we're going to dedicate six cores and twelve threads to you and performance on part of a GTX 1080 and 16 gigs of memory. Or you can subscribe at a higher price point and like boost it, but it it, it stops at like a 1080 Ti. Okay. Um. The problem is, I remember On Live did this back in like 2009 when they tried to come out with their service. Yeah, internet bandwidth wasn't where it needed to be to truly get an, an enjoyable experience. So even if you wanted, like, if the graphics were great, the the block the blocking of the image, like the blockiness, killed it. It's like I stopped streaming my games to the Shield. Okay. Because Maybe I in, uh, the Nvidia Shield, right? Yeah, the the, and the Shield TV. Yeah. I stopped streaming my games from my basement to the Shield upstairs because all I have is wireless AC, and I could not get rid of the artifacting from transferring that amount of data through AC. Mm -hmm. That's why NVIDIA is, like, wired for the best experience. I mean, I, you just need to do it wired. I know. I know. Makes more sense. But the main reason why I got a Shield TV is because the, the link box from Steam yeah. does not support surround sound via AAC. That's kind of... Yeah, yeah, it's stereo only. The Shield is like, no prop, bro. HDMI, here you go. Got you, bro. We have awesome gaming CPU services like Shadow doesn't appeal for PCMR. No, it does not. No, you're not wrong. No, that, and that's the thing. That you want to own your hardware. And even though it's enticing to be like, hey, pay 50 bucks a month and I get the performance of a sweet gaming PC to be able to play these games. But then it's like, oh, yeah, I have a 20 meg down internet connection. Okay. Yeah. Seems legit, bro. Um... It, it, I could see that being something like, 
you would almost need a full ecosystem for that to be. Because you know some companies they'll have, rather than everybody have their own workstation, they'll have like a thin client. Very thin. You'd need everybody to do that almost, to even for yes. this to be real you, useful. You, it's like, it's like, it's like capitalism of game streaming. Everyone has to do it for it to, to really shine. Oh, you just need, yeah, you just need kind of the economy of scale behind it. It just needs the bandwidth. It needs the bandwidth. And until something better comes out compared to broadband, maybe if fiber ever becomes a thing. Yeah. Mark my words, dude, it's going to have to happen because expectations and the intricacy of data that's being passed around back and forth all over the place, the, the sizes are getting bigger and bigger. You know what I mean? Like 15 years ago, if I would have downloaded a graphics driver, probably only would have been close to like 70 megs. No, I mean, you know? you're not now, now it's like 320. But we are in the U.S. and the governing body that handles internet things is actively colluding with Verizon and other ISPs. So, like, while I agree that, like, the market would want to make that happen, Hi, I, Eminem I Smuggler. Hi. Hey. hey Um, Yeah, and then even if you have companies, like, coming out with ridiculously competitive ISP options, yeah. satellite, fiber, you know, delivery boy, whatever, um, Nobody says there isn't going to be a situation of corporate espionage, so, I mean, oh, yeah. it's just kind of like big pharma. Yeah, actually, speaking of corporate espionage, that kind of oh, brings no. us to the next. Oh, it's it's good news with oh, no. a, a little bit of a, an odd side to it. So it's really <sighs> a uh, DRAM exchange, which is a derivative of a marketing company is really what DRAM. is there. Um, DRAM. They essentially, they do research to figure out projections for pricing, things like that. Oh, boy. Um so much research. They last so year much. came out with, "Hey, we expect uh, consumer DRAM, or I'm sorry, server memory pricing to drop by as much as 20 percent um, in the first two quarters of 2018." Wow. They have since updated that to 30 percent. Wow. So essentially, uh, what they're pointing out is that we could see up to a 35 percent overall drop over the next six months in cost for consumers and 50, or I'm sorry, 30 for <laughs> servers. Ruby now, says MIT needs new 5G network because marketing demands it. More 5G, damn more it. More 5G, yeah. Yeah, and Six Kitties brought up a good point. Um, not really a good point, but the statement of Trump demanding 6G because why not? Well, yeah, we just... That was know, in the news, like, recently? Yeah, we'll just shut everything down again for six months. <sighs> you were saying? <laughs> yeah. Um, so memory pricing is dropping and... Which is a good thing, because, I mean, when did it start to spike? 2016? Just about. Yeah. And it went up by, like... Yeah, price is going down. 30% immediately. Like it Says was quick. Um, So what this is going to mean is that we're going to start to see lower prices. What's interesting, though, is the timing. This pricing drop happened within a couple months of the Chinese government investigating SK Hynix, oh, Samsung, interesting. Huh. and Micron interesting. for colluding on price fixing. Well, dude, we, we called that like a year ago. Well, I, it's just the timing is kind of indicative of, all right. And what's, what's crazy, too, is it's all, it, there isn't even an international law against that either. It's all country-specific. So if that was something that you did in the U.S., that's like federal. That's, well, that's, that's a federal fine, like a hefty millions of dollars fine. Like, hey, you made all that money for colluding, so give it back. And by give it back, I mean give it to the government so we can build a wall. <laughs> that's what we need. There's a um, local local story. There's a guy who owns a music shop in Willoughby uh, who uh, is only to be identified as his first name, which is Joe, put up a sign uh, with the word Trump crossed out in a red crossed out circle, right? Okay. Uh, and, th and the sign, he said, if you support Trump, please kindly shop somewhere else, uh, literally said, I feel clean and unethical accepting money from Trump supporters. Unclean and unethical. Huh. Unclean. I mean. Unclean. Hey, man, you do you. I mean, music I shops. Music shops, in my opinion, always kind of smell damp and dirty, anyways. Because does know he know that maybe alienate. that's the reason why he feels unclean? I don't know why you want to alienate like fifty percent of your potential customers. Or why do we have to bring politics into everything? Just as like a business choice. Like, but that—that's what I want to know. Like back in the day, like years ago, probably like in from like from the baby boomer era, baby boomers era, moving forward up until like maybe two thousand, politics weren't brought into anything. It wasn't like, hey, man, look. I respect you, Sean, but I, I, I can't work with you anymore because, you know, you believe in 
I don't know, whatever you want. And Gandhi, now they're even Jesus. bleeding over to like fucking tech support streams, things like that. Dude, it's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. Dude, it's absolutely ridiculous, man. I mean, just don't bring politics into everything. Like everybody has their opinion. Did somebody treat you like crap directly? No, then leave them be. I mean, this guy went as so, far. This guy went as far as to say, like, <laughs> I would rather go out of business than profit from your money. Like, well, you just signed your own death warrant, so have fun. Capitalism at its finest. Yeah, you're not wrong, six kitties. Um, and then Rudy even said, "Thanks, China." Yeah, uh, you know, so that's kind of interesting in that the so the Chinese government, as on this side of the fence for the DRAM price fixing, if that was the case, they are benefiting. But there is all of the uh, who is it? Is it Micron? And the Chinese government, are they actively going after each other for patent infringement? Maybe. There's... Poor yeah. Micron. Yeah. Poor, poor Micron. It, it is a mess. Mm. Uh, other news. 1660. So we were talking about... We were kind of laughing GTX. about it like it was a joke because they came out with the RTX line. Uh, apparently, supposedly, they are coming out with a GTX 1660. Supposedly. There are leaks online of benchmarks. And... Oh. This is actually something I'm pretty excited to talk about because oh, according I'm sorry, to the TI. Yes. That's the one. CTX 660 TI that is supposedly coming out. Okay. NVIDIA has not confirmed this directly. Uh, it, benchmarks have leaked. I mean, dude, that, that open CL score. That's a pretty solid open CL score. 191,416. Bruh. Um, I mean, depending on what the price point is going to be, if they price this thing at around 280, like, Done. This will be like the first mid-series like NVIDIA graphics card that I'll actually be excited to buy because it will have the highest value next to a majority of the cards. And the way that works is it's specifically, supposedly, again, um, the performance is about 20% 20 20 faster than a GTX 1060. And according to some of the, the lead benchmarks, it has far less CUDA cores than any of the RTX variants, so RTX 2060, right? But gaming performance is actually a bit better. Well, I mean, the, the RTX tech is not really that utilized in games right now. So, I mean, for if you're looking to get a card that's you're only going to keep a card for two or three years, mm -hmm. going with a mid-range card like this, uh, that's uh, that's perfect. I'm just going to point out how much of a moron I am because NVIDIA just released the GTX 1060 Ti today. So, yep. it's not supposedly anymore. It's happening. It is. We're selling it. That's how I know I'm an idiot. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm looking here at AVA News and it's like... What are we going to talk about today? Supposedly NVIDIA, new NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. So actually, I, my question for you is, do you think we're going to see a 1680 Ti or 1680? No! No! Why not? Not 1670, 1660! Yeah, but do you think we're going to see a 1670 or 1680 from NVIDIA? Like, do you think this is going to be, they're just putting out this for the mid-range and RTX is going to remain their high end? Or do you think they're actually going to have two separate... I mean, we have as, as much of a chance of seeing a 1680 as we do seeing a, a four-foot goblin slash leprechaun hybrid Twitch streaming. I mean, on a daily basis, uh, dude. I, have you gone through all Twitch? I guarantee there's somebody that pretty pretty close. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. For all I know is, if that I were in his position, I would trademark my own cereal called Goblins and Marshmallows. Ruru GTX 1060 or 1660 Ti. Are you kidding me? 310 on Newegg. 280 to 310 on Newegg. Wow. Okay. So um, much excite. Such graphics card. Much cooling. Such pricing. Much fan. Yeah. I wonder if these are going to have um, the same kind of heat issues that we saw at the RTXs. Uh, Rudu says Rudu says there was a sports store that closed down because it didn't want to sell Nike. I heard about that. Yeah. Because of Kong uh, Kaepernick. And now they're closing. Yeah. Uh, Ruru, no, the 1660 Ti price is very close to the RTX 2060. There isn't much of a gap for another product line. Mm. I can see what you're saying with that. But at the same time, if the 1660 Ti is close to the 2060, then why is the 1660 coming out? Like it, it's, Meaning, it's NVIDIA gaming. is trying to get into that point, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see them come out with more in the GTX. It's because it, they're trying to cater to both audience, it feels like. So if you have people that want to be early adopters for ray tracing, you have the RTX. The RTX cards almost feel like they just took the Titan product line and expanded it a little bit. Like it almost feels like it fits into that. A little bit. And it, the reason, user. and I think the reason why you might feel that way is because the Titan has always been the kind of series of card where gaming is great, but professional use is better, even though it's a GeForce card and there's no official support for professional use. Right. They did that with the RTX. Like, yeah. hey, now you can scale down our RTX series cards and it's, oh, look, ray tracing. People are going to buy it for professional use and, and damn the consequences, which means a lack of support, right? 
Um, or you can go with the GTX if it's going to be gaming focused. And there you go. Bob's your uncle and Barbara's your aunt. So. Whole family, sir. Whole family. Together again. Um, so actually talking about the 1660 Ti, as he just mentioned, we are we do have it up on our site right now. It is available for purchase. It's built with the touring architecture. Um, so yeah, as of right now, comes you can in four go on flavors our site and build a PC including one of these new cards. Performance that rivals the GTX 1070. Which I mean, that's have they it, come out with VR benchmarks on these yet? Sean, it gives you the supercharged performance to play the latest games. Oh, thank you, Joe. How <laughs> How about the Fortnite bundle that is now available on avadirect.com? It's Ava. It's avadirect.com. It, it's avadirect.com. <laughs> there are V-Bucks involved. What did you just call me? Yeah, you heard me. Did you just call me Mr. V-Buck? Well, you're Mr. C-Buck. Whoa, sir. You know what, Sean? Has nobody ever taught you that you never look at a free horse's teeth? Don't reinvent the bicycle, man. You don't. You don't look at a free horse's teeth because the horse is free. Who cares about the teeth? Just don't look. <laughs> um, no, but in all seriousness, Fortnite bundle has been extended well into March, as far as I understand, right? Well into March. I mean, it's Fortnite, dude. It's I know. Crazy kids. Rather them be doing the Fortnite than the crack cocaine. I mean, Fortnite to me feels like the uh, the game equivalent of like Supernatural. Oh. Where the fans are worse than the actual thing itself. <laughs> right? oh. Is that just me? Am I off base? Oh. On but there's so many good Supernatural memes, though, man. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so many good the Supernatural. The worst part about memes. Supernatural isn't the show; it's the fans. Yeah. Man, um, other than the V Bucks, by the way, with the Fortnite bundle, you're gonna get the Reflex outfit, rare. Pivot glider rare, angler axe pickaxe uncommon, and the response unit that's back bling. What is back bling? Like is it? It's like someone with a hairy back, and like they have studded diamonds that they like weave into their back hair. It's like check out my bling bling. No, I imagine somebody like got like the Dookie chains from the '90s, like the giant gold chains, and they were like, "That's cool," but what would be cooler is if you spin it around. You know how ball caps used to be cool if you S turn them around? Spin it around. I'll be back. Back bling. Oh, apparently, according to Kitties, it's a backpack, but I like my version better. I need a backpack. A backy backpack. I need a backpack. A backpack so neat that it can't be beat. You want some seat swag? I got a backpack. <clears throat> Is Mike. that like a high C commercial? Mike draws. <laughs> You never heard that song? No. Joe Ellick for the longest time when oh, it was like his God. turn to listen to music. I got a song for you guys. I want a juice box. Oh, a juicy juice box. God. Oh man, I played his, that once for his my daughter. Music is is I, interesting. I played that once for my daughter, just joking around, and then she requested that song every night for bed. I'm like, what have I done? Yeah. No. You. Congratulations. You played yourself. <sighs> I know. I also played her the the Slipknot Psychosocial Fruit Salad mix, and she really liked that. She's like, Daddy, why is that man angry? I'm like, well, it's probably because of something you did. He's not a big fan of cantaloupe. I don't see a difference between Fortnite and hard drugs. They're both bad for you. Weasley, this is true. I'm wanna, pretty sure hard drugs are cheaper. I want to circle around what Amarudu said. No, the 1660 Ti price is very close to the RTX 2060. There isn't much of a gap for another product line. So informative. Thank you. May. Huh? What? What? I don't know. The, the so informative thing in the May was huh? after... The first, huh? he said that, and then that. What? Where, where are you pulling? I didn't even mean to say that. You're just going back in the in the vault here, man. Jeez, you're like Disney. You're the vault. Speaking of Disney. 76. Punisher and Jessica Jones got canceled, man. Wait! There's more. We now offer financing up for 36 months. Down to 24 and 12. Oh, for bread. Yes. 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 Now. Where the butter, there the bread. You put us together, it's a good time. Bread I gotta tell you, like seeing bread everywhere is just the, the amount of carbs. We have so many carbs for you to choose from. Cards and carbs. We're gonna have this big event with our financing. It's gonna be called Carbs and Cards. Where we give you good financing on graphics cards. <laughs> Not really, I'm talking out of my butt. But yeah, essentially what that means is if you want to buy a uh, PC off of our website, we now have even more financing options compared to what we used to have. So you lazy get a cheese payment, what is lazy it, cheese 59 or something lazy cheese 59 why though i don't know why? lazy cheese 59 maybe because our production manager loves terrible meme music <laughs> allegedly <laughs> they sell backpacks 
Rudo, they sell backpacks. Who sells backpacks? Your mom. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, I've got sold, a problem with Maureen, bro? So I've heard. Bro? No, I don't have a problem with Maureen. Better not. It's Maureen. No, it's Maureen. Maureen. Dude, she'll stab you, man. Maureen. It, that's, it, which is weird because I say that with, I try to say that with a New York accent. And that's my sister's name, but it's Mo, more, more, Maureen, yeah. not Maureen. So I guess it's more Boston. Boston. Yeah. Get the car. Maureen, get the car. I, I Go to the yacht. I don't know, man. We're from Pittsburgh. It's not. Lay down some sod. It's close to both ish, I guess. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. I don't know, dude. I know. <laughs> Gaming. In gaming news, for those of you that love the Persona universe, Atlas has released a survey oh. asking its players, would you play us on the Switch? How about That's on the PC? Is. How about on the Xbox? All I'm going to say is please, please release a new trauma center for the Switch, for crying out loud. That was like one of my most favorite games for the Wii, dude. Do you ever play Trauma Center? I don't even know what it is. Okay, so you play Dr. Styles, all right, which is a doctor that has like Like this. the guy from Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yes. Not Ryan Styles, Dr. Styles. I was right? always a bigger fan of Colin. And the whole point is, at least for like, it came, it, the first Trauma Center games came out for the DS, all right? And basically you're this doctor that has this ability to slow down time and have laser focus. And it's like, so you start off- Surgeon Simulator without the yeah. joke? Yeah, you start off, like, doing operations for people and stuff, right? Um, and it gets to a point in the game to where weird stuff starts happening. Like, in the, the one that I played for uh, the 3DS, it's like there's this uh, mutated form of cancer that, like, attacks the body at, at a, an accelerated rate. And so you'll be, like, like, like uh, pulling pieces of tumor out of someone's body, and then all of a sudden... It's not like, a tumor. It's not a tumor. It's not. It's coming up so fast. Dada. They start popping up on screen real fast, and you have to start, like, trying to take out all the tumors while you continue to do what you're in there to do, and then the person's heart rate starts dropping. It's like their health almost. Okay. And then you you do, like, your little shake thing, and it makes you slow down time, and then you can do everything you need to do fast enough to clean them up and then suture them up before you know it's done. It was, like, a very fast-paced game. Yeah. It's like The Sims for Emergency Room. He's exactly right. Oh, Rudy's okay. exactly yeah. right. It's just a super fun game. It was the only game of its type, and Atlas made it. Gotcha. And then they and they're also up. the same. So these are the same guys that make Persona. Yep. Oh, okay. I just got that Persona Five music stuck in my head every time I read or see Atlas. Oh, I had a I had a friend that got into Persona. You want to talk about hard or uh, hard drugs and video games? Holy crap! Is Casey get it? Like she's into Persona, right? Does she get sucked into the point where like you don't see her for a couple days? Our cat's name is Prinny. Fair enough. I live with a dude that loved... I didn't see him for, like, three weeks. Really? Just like, where... Um, yeah, it was a roommate in college. I, I wouldn't what say Casey was ridiculously obsessed with it, but, like, like we... Like, gamers typically do when you get on a good game. It's like any spare time you have, you jump on it, so... Oh, th I mean, they're, those games are, like, 100-hour games, too, aren't they? Dude, she was probably... Huge. Casey's probably, like, a good 60 hours in, and she's fantastic at RPGs because she's able to determine people's strengths and weaknesses and then build them up in that way. Okay. With the exception of the time when she played Final Fantasy and she made Barrett the healer. Yeah, Final what Fantasy an idiot. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Barrett's like a tank. He's a guy with a gun for an arm and she's like, yeah, he's my healer. Like, what is that? Does that gun shoot band-aids? Maybe she was playing Team Fortress ba, 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 too, ba, 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 ba. Here's a band-aid! I don't know, man. But it's entirely my fault as to why she stopped playing Final Fantasy VII because she, um, in the submarine, floated past Omega Weapon. And I'm like, oh, oh, that kill that guy. You'll take him down easily. And she was only, like, level 65. And probably five seconds into it, all Omega Weapon does is open, pull its sword up and slam it on the ground, and everybody dies in one hit. And she just turned around and threw her controller at me. I'm like, what was that for? I'd saved in three hours. Oh! Oh. Yeah. I, I deserve... All of the negative karma that comes. Yeah, I was going to say you're lucky. You're still married, man. I, well, we weren't married at the time, so <laughs> <laughs> jokes on you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah, Atlas coming across new horizons. If only that actually happens, we'll see. Uh, it's kind of interesting too because Atlas never really focused on graphics. So I wonder for releasing titles on PC if that's something they would ever start to consider. It's usually all cel shaded. I, I mean. 
don't know. I think we have enough games that are going for realism. Like, I, I like the more stylized, less, like, <clears throat> photorealistic graphics. I tend to prefer that over Ar Artistic the... graphics are just as good. Yeah, like, I, 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 I like that in terms of uh, just an aesthetic style. <laughs> well, he's like, 100-hour game? That's cute. Yeah, come talk to me after you finish Breath of the Wild. I was 160 hours into it. Yeah, yeah. Come talk to me and see how many hours I've spent in Dota. In Dota, I don't know, like, a thousand. Not even close. Wow. You know, what, Sean, what you should do when you go on dates before you even sit down to have dinner discussion, like before this moves any further, you just hand them a card that shows like your current play hours in Dota and give them the chance to leave. Joe, I would like to not die alone, <laughs> preferably. You know what I mean? Like maybe you'll find someone that's like, "Oh, that's so hot," and then you're like, uh, "Waiter, check please." Uh, I can promise you, I won't. <laughs> I'm, dude, I felt the same and way. What? Yeah, I felt the same way for the longest time, and then in comes this wonderful woman into my life that. Kicks my ass in everything from Soul Calibur to Dead or Alive. All right. Look, man. Valentine's Survey. Day was last done. <laughs> awesome. Awesome alien icon. I'm glad you did because I did too. <laughs> I did the survey as well. Well, so that's promising news. There is some, some bad news. What? We knew it was coming. What? Punisher and Jessica Jones got canceled. <gasps> no! So uh, this is coming from uh, Netflix. They no! had had previously canceled, uh, what, Daredevil and Iron I mean, Fist Well, because it's Luke Daredevil. Cage. Whoa. It's friggin' Daredevil. No, I know. Yeah, they, so they canceled those three, and then Punisher Season 2 came out a couple weeks ago. That has been now canceled. And after the upcoming Jessica Jones Season 3, which hasn't been released yet but will be <clears throat> this year, they're not doing anything more with that. Oh, so they're, so they're coming out with the Season 3 of Jessica Jones, but not the Punisher. That seems real legit. From what I understand is the third season of Jessica Jones has already been shot. Let me, let me break it down for the people that don't understand potentially how bad this is for everybody, okay? Especially adults. So the reason why Netflix uh, canceled their subscriptions, whatever, their agreements didn't renew uh, for the Marvel IP is because Disney is pulling everything, excuse me, that is Disney owned off of any other streaming services and investing it all into the Disney specific streaming service, right? Disney, however, um, owns all of the Marvel rights that um, they purchased prior to Fox having Marvel rights, and then they purchased the Marvel rights that Fox had. So now they own all Marvel IPs, all of them. Disney has already come out and said publicly they will never release anything that is rated R in their streaming service, so you can say goodbye to any adult well, adult catered Marvel it? movies. They are releasing uh, on their streaming service, yes, but they have uh, a, adult cartoons, which sounds weird, but like... PG-13 rated R animated films that they're putting out on another streaming service, and I forget which one it is. What, and what's look. it called? Schlub Hub? Hmm? Uh, let, me, let me look. Mickey Mouse House? I, I forget where it, it might have been, like, yeah, Hulu Mickey or something. Mouse Clubhouse. Come inside, it's fun inside. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. <laughs> wow. Just saying. It's bad news either way. I, it is. There, nothing I, good can come from this. I genuinely <clears> think <throat> that that the Disney streaming service they're going to try and leverage some of these into. You know what I mean? Like they're going to reboot. Maybe not Punisher. Sony still owns Spider Man. Ah ah ah. Well then, how did Disney make the Spider Man movie? It, it's some kind of partnership. What? Yeah. Disney doesn't want their stuff on other people's things, don't we all? I mean, it's Disney, though. It's friggin' Disney. They're, it it like, is, but, like... And Disney is the umbrella of our time, <laughs> is what I feel like. I feel like on the surface, Disney's, Disney's doing fantastic things, and we're all like, oh, Disney. Under the surface, they're they're brewing something that is very unwholesome. I can feel it. Yeah, I mean... I, I don't like it. Yeah, it's a Which, little... You, eh, it's, eh, mm, something doesn't feel right. I've played enough Resident Evil to understand that you're too good to be true. No. You have an underground base somewhere, and you're, like, making <laughs> you're, you're, mutant cartoon <laughs> characters that are humanoid. I mean, come on. Experimenting on people. Oh, my God. Exper experimenting on dogs, mice, ducks, birds. Lions and tigers. Bears. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> um, oh, and you know what? Yeah. While we're talking about animals, this is a horse animals. that has been dead for a very long animals. time, and we just like keep... Animals. Just keep hammering away at it. 900 hours of beating a dead horse is what it is. Yeah. Fallout 76 <clears throat> has gotten worse. 
Bethesda has banned a player for logging 900 hours and getting an obscene amount of ammo. So, like, the one dude that really liked Fallout 76 got banned for liking it too much. Yeah, bro. And their argument is that it's there's no way somebody would spend that amount of time to get that amount of ammo. They don't think it's possible. Even Bethesda's like, bro, this <clears throat> game sucks. You didn't spend 900 hours in it. Right. So they banned him first, and now they're investigating, rather than just investigating the dude. And I just think Bethesda didn't already have great things going for him because of the ridiculous outcome of Fallout 76. So now stop people from playing a game that people don't already want to play. Yeah, it's that makes a, no sense. It's either, just a puzzling choice. Either you're you're like that ignorantly cocky, or you're just dumb. Or and I mean this is something that that to give Bethesda in this case a benefit of the doubt. In a lot of cases, this is like one or two dudes. You know what I mean? Mm. At least the initial one, like the My. initial banning the the player. A lot of times that's a, a relatively small subset. That's not like something they did intentionally, I got, but it's still not their, good. I got their subset right here. <laughs> Come over to my house, I'll show them a subset. Yeah, Weasley, the true crime is this dude put in 900 freaking hours. Yeah, he's not getting that back. Ever. And now he doesn't even have the ammo. No, he has nothing. He So he didn't have a life. We already knew that. And now he doesn't have the ammo. And his Fallout 76 character. Yeah, it's just... Wow. It's just disappointing. Wow. So what have you been playing wow. recently? Wow. What? What have you been playing recently? Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2? Yeah, I, I got all the way to, probably I think I have like another half hour left of the gameplay on Leon's story, and then I'm going to jump into Claire's. Okay. But it's like, we were getting ready to go to bed, um, and I w thought I was at the end of the game, so I kept going, and then once I hit another typewriter, I'm like, no. No, I, I, I have at least <laughs> another 20 minutes. Save. Walked away. But the game is just awesome. All right, so I have a question for you. What would be better... Um, if I had to choose between Near Automata, starting that this weekend, or Resident Evil Two, oh f, which one? Oh f, me. Which one a. do I start with? Oh, dude. Um, well, both games you're gonna want to replay. Okay. Um, each storyline in Resident Evil Two is about eleven hours, give or take. Okay. So if you're looking for a game that you can go through within a reasonable amount, of, a reasonable amount of time, cool. Uh, Near Automata is, or Automata, whatever, what have you. Um, is the same thing, about 10 hours, maybe 15. Okay. But you could replay the game, and every time you replay it, you're playing as a different character from the same story from a different perspective. And as you play as everybody, you get the full picture of the story and everyone's background. And Does you the gameplay get stagnant because you're doing the same thing no. over and over? Does it, no. It keeps Fly, Like you'll, you'll play 2B, okay. right? And her play style is her play style, and then you jump to um, 2A or something. So is it kind of like in uh, the Arkham games where you could play as Catwoman and she fought differently? Like yep. it was a completely different. Yep. Okay. Yeah, All right. A lot of characters. I got. I got to remember the dude's name. Nine S. So two B is the girl. Nine S is the the dude. You play as Nine S, and then you start to play as other characters to understand their background story, and it starts to fill in a lot of the gaps and tie up loose ends, and it becomes incredible. Okay. It is an incredible game. Now is. I want to say near Automata, honestly. If I have problems finishing games, though. I mean, they're both fairly good because okay. they have fairly short storylines for each playthrough. So okay, you don't feel yeah. like, man, I've been doing this for 25 hours. I just want to be done, like Assassin's Creed or Far Cry. Dude, I made the mistake of jumping. Have you ever heard of Star Ocean? It's like a JRPG series. Yeah, oh, absolutely. My oh, I did not know. Three discs long. I did not know. So I just like got one at GameStop. I was like, cool. I made it. 10 hours in, and I was like, a percent. And I was like, I'm out. <laughs> Bye. Dude, that, you know what I can't stand about RPGs? Like, I started to play... Um, man, what was it? It's a Japanese RPG for the Switch. And it's... Uh, Fire, Fire Emblem? Switch, you know, hold on. RPG. It's a really, really popular game. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Oh, yeah. The thing that I do not care for about Japanese RPGs, so JRPGs, is the fact that they are ridiculously heavy with cutscenes. So you literally have 10 minutes of cutscenes, and then like a half hour to 45 minutes of gameplay. What and then, is this? You know, Skull and Bones? What is this? Ubisoft is coming out with another game? Yeah, so uh, on the, on the feed we have up here, Brooke just put up... A, uh, a web page for Skull and Bones, Skull. which looks to be a new game. Skull and Bones. Gee, Sean, 
Is it perhaps based on the Assassin's Creed engine and it plays just like when you are on the ship? Didn't they come out with a... Didn't they just come out with a ship game like two years ago? It's an upcoming action video game developed by Ubisoft Singapore and published by Ubisoft and released for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One in 2019. The game revolves around piracy and naval warfare. Yup, that's exactly what it is. Wasn't there... Oh, God, they're coming out with a game that's based on it. Wasn't there a ship game that came out, like, from Ubisoft relatively recently? I don't know. Am I losing my mind? I don't know. I don't want to harpoon any more whales. Who knows? Maybe it'll be cool. I mean... That is old news. That was announced so long ago. Well, I guess I'm out of touch. AKA Assassin's Creed Black Flag. You are right, Recon. Yeah, I was Spartan. gonna say maybe that maybe I'm thinking of last time it was announced. Uh it really just doesn't depend on the amount needed. If the UN supported our end and since then had full support for all patteries in the hues of, of the garbins of today. Let's bring back Sean. You know, you, you <laughs> used to be legit. You used to be too legit. Too and legit. Now, to you're quit? not legit. Now you must quit. <laughs> you can't touch this. You can't touch this. Look, if you're gonna say that and you're not gonna you can't do touch the this. crab dance back and forth, I don't think you uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Hammer time. Do you know he got sued for that? Did he get su- I thought he just like went bankrupt because he was just like, I'ma buy all my friend stuff, and then they No, he employed he employed everybody that he grew up with in like the projects. Paid, okay. paid them six-figure salaries to, you know, bring them out of poverty. Blew all of his money, yes. And then right when, like, you, you, he, like, he felt like things couldn't get any worse, he got sued by one of his childhood friends over the, uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Like, yeah, somebody's suing, claiming that you ripped it off of him. He's like, I didn't rip it off on anybody. I got that from my childhood friend, blah, blah. And they're like, yeah, that's who's suing you. Oh, that's mean. Yeah, dude, right? That's just, yeah, good lord. Rags to riches, back to rags. <sighs> hey, let that be a, a lesson to anybody else that gets rich, right? Can't help everybody, I suppose. Whew. Got sued by his childhood friend. Yeah, dude. That's like, brutal. How do you come back from that? I don't. Like, it's cool, man. Like, I, I forgive you. Enjoy my three million. Yeah, like, that's... Wow. No, nah, dog. Speaking of million, that somebody um, who won a million-dollar jackpot accepted their... Their payout and a scream mask. What like he went to like to um, confirm his identity and accept the money? Yeah, that he won the jackpot. Showed up in a scream mask with skeleton gloves on. I mean, there's a lot of them that will hide their faces. That's what I'm saying. It's like they're like, well, dude, like if you my ever... uncle it will want all my money, so I don't want. Well, yeah, dude, have yeah. you read some of the stories of people like they won the lottery and they're open about it and how like it ruined their lives? Well, I mean, the what, what's the joke? It's. 90% of lottery winners are broke again because people that care about fiscal responsibility don't play the lottery or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. The the percentage of them, who do you think is worse at managing their money? Retired NFL players or lottery winners? Here's the thing. I'm the kind of person, the way I'm at, like I, I've always had a desire to impulse buy things. What I've okay. learned to do in my older age is to impi- impulse buy things that like are kind of menial in a matter of speaking. So like if I feel like getting a new TV, I'm not going to impulse buy a TV, but I'll impulse buy something that's maybe for $10 and I'm like, oh, I have a new thing. And yeah, but I- if you make like $10 million a year at what, you know what I mean? Like I imagine that just keeps kind of shifting up. I would honestly, first thing I would do is I would see an accountant and have him like plan out like retirements and stuff. Oh, yeah. And then I would probably give everybody in my family a reasonable amount of money. I'm not saying like hundreds of thousands of dollars, but like here's 20,000 for you, 20,000 for you, 20,000 for you, 20,000 for you. Now leave me the hell alone. No, you got to do what Shaq did. Shaq did it right. What do you do? Like as soon as he got his first deal, he was like, went out. He found, he, he I forget how he describes the dude. He's like, oh yeah, just a short little Jewish accountant. And then he just handles all my money. He hooked up with that dude at like 21 and now he's still okay because he's kept the same account. Like that was the first thing he did. Hmm. I, that's, all right. Chicken nuggets. Speaking of chicken nuggets, it's time to go <gasps> and get us some chicken nuggets so you can get yourself some chicken nuggets. Thanks for uh, stopping by, guys. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Good to see you. Have yourself a nice weekend. And thanks again for joining.